Welcome back for the final time today to the Hearthstone Global Games. I'm Falcone. Joining me is Cora. And yeah, I don't think we've had quite long enough to digest what just no, happened. But we're gonna we're gonna do this anyway. We're gonna do this anyway. Next up, final game of the day, Mexico versus Italy. And as with the rest of the games, winner goes through to top eight, loser's out. High stakes, let me just tell you. And, and if this match is even a fraction as good as the last one we saw, then we are in for a real treat as our closing match of the day. I've been casting Mexico quite a bit because on the American side of the broadcast, we've been doing a lot of uh, South America and Asia Pacific. So I've seen a lot of Mexico, and I know you are rooting thoroughly for Italy. Yeah. So I think that'll be the final casting well, prediction. We're 3-2 now at the moment. You've got three True. picks, I've got two. So I need Italy to win this just to tie it up. But Italy, Inaven, Turner, Snowman, Yorgmuth, Mexico, Evan G, Epsilon, Yanis, and uh, is it Empazonado? Empanizado. Empanizado. Yeah, Yinus and Empanizado. I think I've, I think I've said Empazonadio a few times, so I well, apologize you know, for that. That's, I can't blame you for it. There's some really good names in this. <laughs> there are some <laughs> very, very unique names. Very, uh, very, uh, very hard to say names. Yeah, for well, us. it's something that we've uh, <laughs> we've had to we've had with. to work on it, but that's okay. I'm excited to see Italy play today. It'll be my first time uh, getting to witness their play firsthand and getting to cast. Mexico has, I think, made quite a name for themselves throughout this entire tournament. They have a bunch of players who aren't very well known. Um, a couple of streamers in the form of Epsilon. Um, and not really that much competitive experience, but they work very well together as a team. They synergize very well, and they listen to each other, um, which has given them some really fantastic results thus far. And you'll have to be the one to tell me more about Italy, because I, I honestly just don't know much about Italy, these guys. Italy, another team with great synergy. Let's take a look at the matchup, how the games are going to go today. One last time, Cora, tell me. Tell me how <sighs> the Hearthstone Global Games format works. For my last time in the Hearthstone Global Games. Four players per team, each have two unique classes, and then from there it plays out like a best of five conquest blind pick match. If it goes to game number five, then one of the players that played previously comes back as the ace. They then have the choice of playing the class that they either did not play before or that ninth class, which in this case is a warlock for either of them. Huh, that's different, both. Players actually have your Warlock as their, with their second player, I mean, both teams with their second player, which means we're either obviously going to get Druid versus Mage or something interesting that's going to go on. But even more interesting for now, Rogue versus Hunter coming up as the first game. Of this is a bit strange. It really is. Uh, Rogue, I would have to say, is probably unfavored here just because Hunter has consistent, aggressive um, push capabilities. If it curves out well, then the rogue has no health gain. They have no taunts. They have no real way to clear a wide board state of mid-range minions. Um, very similar to Druid in a lot of ways. And rogue, for this tournament, quest rogue is not legal. You cannot play the rogue quest right. because the, we knew the balance change was coming. We didn't know when. We didn't want it to go live during the tournament and mess up all of the deck submissions. So it's a miracle rogue. It is a Miracle Rogue. It's going to be running Undercity Huckster, a card that we don't see that often in Miracle Rogue nowadays. But when it does appear, it, it, hang on a second, there's a Shadow Step too. Could be aggro. I alluded earlier to the fact that Water Rogue could still exist. It's a thing. It could still be a thing. Tempo Rogue, you know, Finger is still around. Um, oh, something I should say about Team Italy since you asked earlier. Do tell. Snow Snowman did message me earlier today and say, hey, we're going to DreamHack Valencia this week. Uh, and so we're playing all together from a house in in Spain. That's very cool. So that's that's where they are right now. Wow, Anyone's okay. Wondering? We haven't always seen Team Italy, team Italy playing together before. Mm -hmm. I know they talk a lot. They all play for the same team outside. Yeah, you said that, that before, that they actually um, work very well together because they work well together right. you know, consistently outside of the Hearthstone Global Games. Exactly. Uh, this is a great start for both teams, actually. Italy there with every one drop you can possibly dream of. One drops galore, weak to Fan of Knives, but if this is an aggro rogue, which it does look like, you may not even see Fan of Knives in this build. Okay, Alley Cat is probably fine. Firefly Coin Flame Elemental might be the play, actually, because you get two one-twos on the board. Um. Problem is with that that you're wasting the coin, whereas you can just play Alley Cat without using the coin mm -hmm. and you can contest this board perfectly. I wonder. Hmm. 
Because your hand is so low cost right now, you would ideally like to save the coin um, for Savannah High Main, but assuming there's sap in this list, Savannah High Main is not as effective against Rogue. Um, in a lot of cases, it's just a strict tempo loss. Right. <clears throat> <laughs> it's funny, one of the things that I think has changed dramatically as Hearthstone's gotten older, something that people don't realize is very hard about these aggressive decks is that even on turn one, you can have a really hard set of decisions to make. Which is the correct play? Do you play two Fireflies? No, of course not, because you probably just lose them both to these minions. Maybe you play Alley Cat, Coin Firefly, maybe you just play Alley Cat, maybe you play both of the Fiery minions. Okay. It's a lot of questions to answer, and ultimately Italy came up with this Genzo the Shark. Okay, we, we've got to read on this. <laughs> so Maybe you have, I'm, I'm clueless. Th th this is aggro. They're looking to dump the hand quickly and Genzo for cards. It. Right, okay, I'm with you now. He's, uh, he's modern day Jeeves, folks. Four mana, five, four. When you attack with this minion, draw until you have three cards in hand. I'm not sure if it's attack face or attack minion or attack in general. I don't know. Oh. We'll have to see. I'm, I'm Genzo ignorant. <laughs> Genzo ignorant. Job done. I mean, with this hand that Mexico's got right now, it doesn't look like Genzo's gonna do anything. Because it's gonna take too long to get all these minions down. Turn five, Tundra Rhino. Okay, sure, Mexico doesn't run that in the deck. It yeah. came, came from a Swashburglar. But uh, I just can't see Genzo getting any value anytime soon. And against an aggressive deck, well, you're going to be drawing any of the cards, too. That's just not ideal. Inovin just going to keep putting pressure on the board as much as possible. It's really all that the mid-range hunter build can do. You put down minions, you synergize beasts with abilities like Crackling Razor, Maw's Adapt, and Houndmaster, and then you push consistent damage, and eventually the pressure mounts, and you win. I wonder if we'll see Savannah High Main hit face this game. Maybe I this game will this, break the this, adage. This could be a new test. <laughs> this could be another test for the adage. Second hunter of the day. So. Innovin wants to push as much damage as quickly as possible. That much is clear by the fact that his opening hand was full of one drops. Eaglehorn Bow may be tempting, but then putting the Fiery Bat on the board and just smacking the hero power, that's not bad either. Now you gotta weave the hero powers in as much as possible. Exactly, Because yeah. that, that damage is permanent damage. And then later rope. on, you can play the bow and then hit the hero power as well. Exactly, for five on the weave same Weave in five every turn, sure, mm -hmm. why not do that? Yeah, I would, I would definitely go for bat hero power here. Shaku can only hit one minion. Uh, the the weapon will only deal with Fiery Bat whilst also taking more damage for Epsilon. I think the hun Hunter is definitely looking like the favorite here at the moment, anyway. Quickly. I don't know, I wouldn't call it just yet. I'm not. I think the, I think the hunter's going to have a couple. I've learned my lesson yeah. from calling <laughs> hey, games. We but. were right. <laughs> I'm just saying that the hunter is... is hunter's going to have a couple of, of empty turns. We were right. We were just a little bit early. Uh, we, we've... Uh, hey, whenever this attacks. There we go. explained what gets Yes, it. both players draw until they have three cards. So it is like Jeeves-esque. Well, pick up a secret and... There you have some value. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's possible too. Shaku can get a trap. Or the Huxter could get a trap. Mm -hmm. Then again, just the fact that the Cloaked Huntress is a 3 mana 3 4, that's fine, probably. It's kind of expensive. It's, it's good enough, I would think. You can't Shadow Step Shaku, play it back down in SI. Okay. Oh, that's really interesting. It depends on how much value you think you really need to get off of Shaku. Alternatively, uh, Epsilon could dagger up, hit the fiery. Bat and just play Huckster. Yeah, that too. Means she takes two damage. I actually, I actually really like that. So if the bat okay. death rattle doesn't go on to the Shaku, then Shaku might live. Mm -hmm. And by playing the Huckster first, you lower the chance of it yep. hitting. 33%. All right, so that's actually the absolute best outcome for Mexico there. 
One damage to face means nothing. Um, but it does mean that both of these minions live through the flame elemental. Is Kenzo a pirate? Kenzo is not a pirate. Okay. I love the card, though. The animation in the background, how you see the it's card very cool. around. Yeah. What is not cool is Innofen's turn now. We've yeah. hit turn four, and if he doesn't want to play Galaka Crawler, then he can't hero power. Like, he has to play the bow or the Galaka Crawler hero power. Mm -hmm. Unleash the Hounds just doesn't seem... I think it's the bow. I think it's the bow. Yeah. I think you bow down Shaku, hit face for one. Well, that's true. Innofen does have to get rid of that card. Although... Does it matter what hunter cards Epsilon gets? Like, none of them are going to heal her. Yeah, that's true. Do any of them have taunt? Call of the Wild would give Misha. Animal Companion could give Misha. Houndmaster, if Epsilon already had gotten a beast from Swashburglar. Stranglethorn Tiger, this this is aggressive. I'm betting we would see um, the 4 mana 4-4 four, four give plus 2, plus 2 to a stealth minion. I cannot remember the name of the card for the life of me, but it is a rogue class minion. That we're seeing a little bit of in I, I played like a stealth aggro rogue build. I played the cards three this. days ago, and I've completely forgotten what it's called. It's not Master of Disguise. It's no, it's not Master of Disguise. That gives stealth. I can't remember. That. Oh, that's frustrating. Okay, let's just forget you ever asked. Nope, can't do that. <laughs> can't do that. <laughs> All right, why don't you try and work it out? Shaku gonna hit the one two as planned originally. <laughs> Knuckles. Um. Okay, so the, the good thing about Shaku getting all of this value is that... Shadow Sensei. Okay. Well and people were playing it with Silent Knight. Yes, that's right. And Jungle Panthers. Yes. And Shaku and Fingers. Yep. A lot of, lot of synergies with that card. This is why I, I kept going back to Water Rogue, and I was, like I said, I was trying it out a few days ago. Anyway, uh, the, the good thing about Shaku picking up more and more cards is that it means that Epsilon just never needed to play Genzo. Genzo is a problem in this matchup. Just make it not a problem. And now... Dinomancy Rogue. <laughs> I, well, we've, we've got several You've beasts got in his hand. two and beasts in hand. Tundra Rhino with Knuckles and Stranglethorn Tiger in hand. There's a lot of charge damage aye, aye, aye. that Mexico could be dealing unless Italy decided to swing this bow into the Tundra Rhino now, which... I mean, I wouldn't fault them for not. <sighs> well, that's the thing. They want to go face. Rogue is down to 17 health. Knuckles, as a reminder, a card that's not seen very often at all. Every time this attacks a minion, it then bounces and hits the face. Piercing damage, essentially. Yeah, sort of. Sort of. Like, it hits the hero every time. I guess it's not piercing damage because it doesn't deal the difference. Yeah. But, yeah. Best of both worlds. Still not good enough for constructed play. I still think the bow plus hero power is just the... Deal five to face. I mean, the bigger the board gets, Unleash the Hounds just threatens lethal. The problem with, um... The problem with Knuckles, and a lot of the cards that came out for Hunter in Angoro, not Angoro, Gadget Sam, is that a lot of the cards relied on hand buffs to be good. Like, Knuckles is great as a 4-8 or as a 5-9 or something. But if you don't get the hand buff, it's not as good. And the hand buffs themselves just weren't good enough in yeah. those cases. Grimy goons just... They struggled. Oh, we got the Cloaked Huntress and Freezing Trap Dream, although... I mean, that shuts down High Mane if that's what comes out next turn, but... Well, not really, because they unleash the Hounds. Yeah. I think Epsilon is going to want to send this Tiger charging to the face instead. And <laughs> Shadow uh, Step I'd, the Tiger and charge I'd like to again. see a Tiger in the middle to play around. Oh, well, it doesn't matter, because it's not stealthed anymore. Oh, that's so weird. Charge Tiger. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, like I, I was saying, if the Tundra Rhino survives, Next turn, Epsilon could bounce the tiger with Shadow Step, replay it, oh deal God. another five damage, then eviscerate. Whew. That's the That would be thought. 18. It would be 18. Oh. And then uh, Epsilon could just dagger up and deal the 19. Does she have the mana? Yeah. Shadow Step. Tiger is three, eviscerates two, that's five. Ooh. She'll have seven. That okay. would just be lethal. So this Tundra Rhino needs to die. So. is Or is there. Okay, so. Killing Shaku. Three, six, nine. The, the max damage Italy has is nine this turn with two unleash the hounds and the weapon to face. So what if you just put one hound into Shaku, but the, the rest of it into the face? I mean, they don't know that Mexico's they looking don't. exactly though. That's the problem. So they might just decide to push everything face, or they might decide to get rid of the Tundra Rhino and play it extra safe. I like it. And just hero power. Innovant got there. So 
So now, I believe that this isn't lethal. Five, six, seven. Bounce the tiger, hit with it. That's 12. 16, Se 17. 17 with it, sorry, then, then dagger is 18, okay. So is there any way that you prevent lethal? Kill both. Is there any way of dealing more damage without the shadow step? I don't think there is. No. Kill both dogs. Freezing trap. Hmm. But you need to not put three minions on board, otherwise unleash the hounds. No, because um, freezing trap would freeze a hound. Knuckles with charge and then eviscerate is actually almost as much damage for almost as much mana. Just another way that Epsilon uh -huh. actually yeah. has a lot of burst ready to go. But I think <sighs> freezing trap has to come down. You can SI7. Dynamancy. <sighs> Oh, God, this oh, is weird. Oh, no, 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 because, he, because then they won't have the mana to actually yeah, play the hero yeah, power. Yeah. I, I thought for a second that Dynamancy just buffed the beast. Mm -hmm, no, <sighs> it's... Automatically it's, activated it, but no. Okay. It's formatted to actually get the... Oh, I got trap. really excited for a second there. But it didn't okay, so Freezing Trap. Epsilon needs to keep her board at three minions. And then Freezing Trap will freeze a beast. And she needs to kill both of these beasts. Oh, my goodness. Or SI one of them. Oh, come on. Okay, so she believes the freezing trap will deal with this hound, so she didn't have to do that. But it looks like that's yeah, lethal with the second hounds. Yeah, I mean he needed to kill both. I would have liked to see SI come out there and kill this hound, but I think that was just a little bit too long for deliberation there, unfortunately for Mexico. Because if the SI had come out, it's possible the crackling razor maw would have given lethal anyway. Yeah, it probably it's very would. likely actually. Wind fury plus one plus one or attack. Any of them would have done the. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Italy take game number one after what was a very interesting game. One of the, not, not as long as the other games we've seen today, but definitely one of the more interesting ones. You didn't even have to hit face with Savannah High Main for 100 to win this time. But that was just a really I, unique rogue build. Uh, something we certainly haven't seen today. Something we haven't seen since the very end of the Mean Streets of Gadgetson era. I would have to say before the year of the Mammoth um, even came out. It was, it was pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, I liked it. Seems like you like it too. I, I do like it. I, I'm very interested in, in what new rogue builds can uh -huh. come out ever since the quest rogue. Now, if I, like I said to you, our secret is out. You know, I've got a few weird messages from people because I've been playing at the start of the season. I've been playing some water rogue, tried to mm -hmm. reconstruct it, put firefly in. You know, tried some new things with it as well. And I've had people add me and say, "Hey, what? What did what I just lose to? I don't understand." Yeah. Uh, and also, what did I just beat? Because I wasn't winning all of my games. <laughs> Let's take a look at the next Nobody game. Does. It's going to be Yorgmoth on the Druid versus Yinus on the Warlock. All right. All right, what's going on? <laughs> Mexico, they've they've done some crazy things. Um, all the way back to, I believe, their first match when Epsilon played a hunter that had Yasera in it and and Curator. They've 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 been a little bit out there with their yeah. deck selection and with their deck creation. Yasera yeah, Hunter's the name one I can think of. But as well, it's right? worked for them. Yeah. Um, so if anything can top that rogue deck, it's probably Warlock. And the only two archetypes that can come to mind are. Handlock and, and Zoo. Yeah, Blood Bloom Warlock is kind of yeah. somewhere on the hand, on Handlock spectrum. Um, fun fact about Yorgmoth. Uh, I found out this uh, today. Snowman messaged me just mm -hmm. specifically to let me know this. Apparently, he broke one of his teeth recently oh, no. on a very hard biscuit. Oh, no. So he's playing today with one less tooth than usual. Yeah, and a and bad thoughts about biscuits. <laughs> it's yeah, it's kind of tragic. Kind of put me off biscuits a little bit. I and by biscuits, do you mean cookie? Yeah. Okay. I guess. Okay. We've got a little bit of a translation barrier <laughs> here. I, I think we mean cookie. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, th I think you mean cookie. Okay. Good. Sorry, Yorkmouth broke his Clean tooth that on, one a, up. on a cookie. A hard cookie. <laughs> Sorry. But anyways. I'm very American. <laughs> I thought, in here. I thought you were part Greek and part German. I, I am. I am. Uh, but U.S. born and raised. So, cookies. Right. Sorry. Well, let's take a look at the next game. Mexico on the Warlock. This is looking like a zoo deck to me, Cora. Oh, yeah. What? Let's go. Okay. Zoo versus aggro druid. Eh. Mm. Yeah, I don't yeah. fancy the chances of the zoo here. Nah. <laughs> nah. Not that I want to dismiss the deck straight away. Flame Imp seems counterintuitive against this deck. The uh, Druid's just a better zoo deck. Zoo doesn't have any way of buffing all of the minions. I guess it's got the 5-4 the, the demon that can buff all demons. Uh, but it's not. It's no Mark of the Lotus, is it? I'm, I'm curious whether or not it's going to be like a discard lock. 
like like Disco Lock with Lakari Fellhound and uh, Cruel Dinomancer, maybe even. I don't know. I don't know what to expect from Mexico. Yunus looks like he's having a great time. Right. Oh, strong start from Yorgmouth as well. He's got. As long as Yunus doesn't have any crabs. <laughs> Which actually Yorkmouth may be expecting, yeah. because a lot of the more controlly warlocks do run the crabs. Mm -hmm. They run a the lot crab of package. anti tech stuff specifically. But Italy able to just drop this this hunger crab here, and next turn, Blood Cell Corsair plus Mark of Velocis or Mark of Yusserad, depending on what Mexico does. Okay, so what I would expect from this matchup is Mexico's playing traditional zoo warlock minions. Going to try to get value from tempoing out the board state. Abusive Sergeant as well. Uh, they're playing back in twenty. 16, man. Well, I, don't I, don't know. Know. I don't know. 2016? I don't 2015? Know. I don't even know. If we see Shattered Sun Cleric, I'm calling up Raynad and I'm gone. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm done. I don't know how to cast that. Um, but the Druid puts out lower statted minions and then buffs them out of range so they trade effectively with most of the Warlock's minions. So if that's the case, I don't know that it's, it's good for the Warlock. But the Druid struggles with hard draw. That's something that the Warlock has a great handle on with Life Tap. But Life Tap is counterintuitive because the Druid wants to deal damage to you. You're dealing damage to yourself. That's always the way it's been yep. when Zoo Warlock played against aggro decks. That's why Hunter was so favored. Okay, well, this is a, a, a pretty good start for Yinus here, actually. Mark of the Lotus is pretty good for Yorgmuth. He can play the Pirates and Mark of the Lotus, buff up, trade into the Voidwalker, great. If he plays Mark of Yusaraj, gets a card draw. However, the Flame Imp is then going to be able to deal with the Murloc, and Mexico would then be able to get the initiative on the board again. So I think that Italy have to go with the Corsair and the Mark of the Lotus, even though the Mark of Yusaraj maybe feels like a better play. Looks like that is the one they're going for. Trade in patches and the one-two into the Voidwalker. Then the Flame Imp can only deal with one of these minions, so there's no way for Yenis to get complete board control back. Second knife juggler there from Yenis. <sighs> Not the, too useful, unfortunately. If the Shadow Beast were to stick, then sure. The, sorry, the Possessed Villager, before the Shadow Beast comes out. But I don't think it would, and actually Knife Juggler is just going to come out as a 2-2. This is really disappointing. Meanwhile, Italy running Shell Shifter. A little bit of an experimental okay. activity here. It's, it's not bad. It usually means that there's not going to be Finja Package in this deck. Snowman was saying to me that they spent a lot of time preparing for this game. Um, they've also spent a lot of time preparing for DreamHack Valencia. So just all in all, just spent a lot of time preparing and playing Hearthstone together, these guys, recently. Enjoying actually being in one room. Playing together. And Yenis continues to pick up cards that just aren't going to do much. 50-50 for this knife to hit patches. That's a miss. Oh, 50-50? One and three. That wasn't a 50-50. <laughs> so now Patches goes into the juggler. Italy has the card advantage. Living Mana comes down on five, and Mexico has nothing. Yeah, the Shell Shifter does seem like an odd pick for this deck, but it's going to do its job just fine here. Going to gonna go for Taunt, going to realize, okay, we're not playing an aggro game here. We're actually playing, we're going to, be the control deck, mm -hmm. or one of the control decks. We're going to just try and dominate the board, do what zoo decks do best against each other. But being able to curve into Bitter Tide Hydra or Living Manor on turn five, definitely going to do uh, a lot of good for Team Italy. For Mana 7-7 seven, seven incoming? Not quite. Not quite. The meme. Well, it, it is a four mana seven seven. It is a lot of the time. Some if you get double death rattle, it does death rattle into four plans, correct? Yeah, I think so. Well, then that's just right. <laughs> so, the age-old question that druids have to ask themselves on turn five: Do I living matter? Do I bitter tide hydra? Wide board. 
could be very, very helpful against the Zoo deck. I think more helpful than the Bitter Tide Hydra. Mm -hmm. The reason that they may decide to go with Bitter Tide Hydra instead is because later on the Living Mana spawns even more uh, crystals. Yeah, but right now you you only need five. <laughs> you do only need five you, to beat the Zoo. You can't play any more than five. Living Mana is absolutely the way to go. Okay. Team definitely debating about this. I'm gonna go with Bitter Tide Hydra and just start pushing face damage here, sure. Uh, I like this actually getting rid of the 1 1 so that the 4 4 can't trade into the taunt. Makes a lot of sense. And now there's no way for Mexico to suicide the Teradax, meaning there's no way for him to summon the 4 the, the, uh, the 1 1s. And that Bitter Tide Hydra is just gonna keep, keep going face. I mean, it's more damage in the long run. You just want to end this game quickly. 12, that's... Oh, it's one off 16, lethal. 17. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amazing. But now Yorkmouth can just hero power away the Taradox. Uh, trade the crab into the Councilman. Swipe face. Deal with the entire board. And still have an unharmed Bitter Tide Hydra ready to go. This game is just... Uh, I think was from the start unwinnable for Team Mexico. I mean... I, I really appreciate them bringing some out-of-the-box deck choices, maybe trying to surprise the opponent right. with some different stuff, but it's now's, always... now's do-or-die time. Do you really want to be taking big risks now? It's always fun to see Warlock, but I don't think we've seen Zoo do very well at all in this tournament, in the entirety of the Hearthstone Global Games. We've seen some better performances from the Blood Bloom Warlock. We saw a dirty rat Zoo take out Quest Rogue at some point. But other than that, Zoo has just shown that it's not its not what it used to be. It's going to be game that's, two. That's right. a quick 2-0 lead for Italy over Mexico. Yeah, Snowman <laughs> moving forward to take your seat. This is looking like a stomp. Our, our day started with sweeps this mm -hmm. morning. And we had some 3-1s. One, uh, one then we had that incredible series with Netherlands versus Brazil. Is this, are we gonna end the day on a 3-0? It, it very well might be. I mean, it could be a bunch of series leading up to that that incredible series that we had in the last series, and this one could just be the complete opposite and be a 30-minute sweep. You realize that, that when uh, when it's all over, if we, if we end up on tie three each, we're gonna have to I start know. working out game score. I know, I, I don't wanna think about it. I don't wanna think about tiebreakers. Tie I'll call Lorinda, he'll do it for me. <laughs> Let's take a look at the next Not now. match. Too jet lag. Coming up, it's Snowman versus... Empanizado. Empanizado, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, Snowman on the warrior, Empanizado on the druid. Okay, so what crazy druid could Mexico probably bring? Like, Big Druid. Easy. Yep, that's probably it. Uh, they're not going to play crazy decks all the way through today. There, there is, realistically, there can be an advantage to bringing something weird and unexpected. There can. You, you can definitely launch a surprise attack. And who knows, maybe their plan was play irregular decks for the first couple games and then uh, switch and play some regular decks towards the end. I mean, that's, that's some serious mind games right there. If that's what they're going for, then kudos to them because it's, it's <laughs> gutsy as all hell. I still don't know that it's ever enough to, to warrant bringing the worst class in the format <laughs> right now. I just don't. I just don't know. The I don't know. I, I'm rooting hard for Mexico, and I want Mexico to succeed because I've seen them pull off great feats throughout this entire tournament when they were the underdogs and people were consistently rooting against them. And now they brought Warlock. And I'm just like Mexico. Why? Hustling Global I wish Games we could ask is them. definitely a format that's all about mind games. And hey, maybe we'll get a chance to ask them if they do perform. That's true. They could reverse, reverse this. Sweep. We just saw something significantly crazier in our last series. and uh, It wasn't it a reverse was, sweep, though. It no, was, it, it, was, was it wasn't a reverse sweep. It was just tons of tiny percentage points leading up to me missing lethal in the final game and looking dumb. But uh, That was both of us. Uh, happens. That was both of us. <laughs> that happens. Yeah. The, uh, oh man, this one's much more straightforward. It was so far. much more straightforward. So far it has been, but but the first few games were straightforward for that series too. It they was were the last two that really messed with us. They were. It was it was four and five. The Zoth Shaman and, versus Crest Warrior. And again, if you did not see Ukraine versus Netherlands or uh, Netherlands versus yeah, that's the one. Brazil, excuse me. Watch it. <laughs> it, it, it. 
One of the best series I think I've ever seen in my life. Definitely game of the day. So far, there are still a few games upcoming. We're just waiting for the next player on Team Mexico. I forget who Empanizado. it Empanizado. You think I'd remember that? You're just remember <laughs> waiting for Empanizado to come up. <laughs> I just took a bunch of um, I have actually spoken to him recently, though, um, because I was so impressed with his Miracle Rogue play mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. He had a game against Quest Rogue where yeah. he really looked like the Quest Rogue was going to take it. Came back and won with the Miracle Rogue. Uh, seriously, we've had some great performances from both of these teams. I know I am I am biased. It's Lee on my pick. But I have loved, especially over the last few weeks mm. when I've had the chance to yeah. cast them myself, I have loved watching Team Mexico really flourish in the last few weeks of the tournament. They've grown so much throughout this tournament from, from the many matches that I've seen them play in at least. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm proud to see that they've gotten this far and even if they don't win this series, I hope that they'll continue to grow as, as Hearthstone players and as a group because it seems like they do work genuinely well together. Italy, however, is just going face and praying with this lineup so far. We've had Aggressive Hunter, Aggressive Druid, and now <laughs> Pirate Warrior. You know, as they say, face is the place. And this is looking like a pretty good opening hand to start hitting the face with if you're Team Snowman here. Meanwhile, Empaz oh Empanizado. Empanizado. Why can, can work, I not? We can work it out later. Why here. can I not say that? Are you just writing it out phonetically for me? Yes. Emp or an e Zard. Oh, okay, great. I I'll keep this. There you go. I'll keep this forever. Or as long as they remain in the tournament, which mm -hmm. may only be another 10 minutes. But, but anyway. you know what? That's fine. <laughs> that's fine. You're going to get it right for 10 minutes. Yeah. At least I hope that's right. If that's wrong, then well, I probably can't live past this. I'll ever. probably still get it wrong. I just can't. I'm just incapable of saying the words. Italy going face. <laughs> em Call Pani Mexico. Empanizado. Nailed it. <laughs> uh, going to have to just do what he can to defend himself. He looks like he's just going to have to hero power away one of these 1-1s. One mm -hmm. It's not worth the wrath, really. And then Jade Blossom on three. Want to Feral Rage a little bit later, but first he needs to get some of these big taunt cards. Jade Behemoth is one of the big cards that he's going to be looking for. Earthen Scales, if we get to a point in the game where he's actually playing big minions. It looks like they're slotted for Jade Blossom on three, potentially Nourish on five. Yeah. If they're going to stabilize, it's going to be when they're very low, but that's pretty much how Jade Druid needs to operate against Pirate Warrior. What Team Mexico are going to have to work out, I think this is actually quite hard in this game. Is that a Nourish for Ramp, or is that a Nourish for Draw? If if in the next couple of, of draws, mm -hmm. Empanizado gets some cards that... If they get Primordial Drake, exactly. Jade Behemoth, exactly. then, it's, then it's a Nourish for Ramp. And you can hero power on the back of that as well. Swipe might make it worthwhile, but I think they need one more decent late game card. They don't have to decide this turn, they can just Shade Blossom here. Or Mexico may decide they need to wrath away this 3-3 three, three and just play it really safe already. Which is a better play for immediately, for right now, but it's not going to set them up as well for the future. Hmm. So Jade Blossom or Wrath is your option. And if you Wrath, then that means you're committed to swipe on four, which is fine, because it's very likely that something comes down on three that is swipeable, and then you're going for Nourish directly on five, which means Jade Blossom likely never gets played. Yeah. But you do cut down on six points of damage. Yeah, and that's possibly worthwhile. Well, next turn, I guess... If you, if you Jade Blossom this turn, you can then Nourish and then play the Wrath immediately if you're ramping up. Looks like I'm going to go for it. We are on 2-2 Jade Golems. It's not just a 1-1, which means it's going to take both the weapon and the patches or the 3-3 to trade into this, which is... that's something. Unfortunately, Satsi Captain is going to mean that the patches can straight, just straight trade into it, or stick around for some value. Yeah, that works. I think it's going to have to be Nourish into Wrath for, for Mexico here. What's Team Italy waiting for? They've got nothing to coin out, just working out whether they want to hit the weapon in. No. Maybe they're considering saving the weapon and trying to buff it with Captain Green's skin. That's what this pause is about. Yeah, okay. Okay, now we nourish for ramp. Do we? <laughs> because we're still Jade Behemoth on six. Anyway, if we nourish for ramp, then we can Jade. We can Wrath down Southsea Captain exactly. and Jade Behemoth 
that's that's following. That's my argument. Nourished. Well, I, no, you can we can wrath down the the three three right now. Yes, yes, and they J Behemoth on the following turn. Oh yeah, yeah, and then even hero power down patches mm -hmm. then if it's still around. So, or we can just wrath hero power this turn. Nah, it's got to be nourished for crystals. It's way more valuable. Hey, decision made. Wrath gonna do its thing. And looks like it has has to be Captain Greenskin here for Italy. Dread Corsair just isn't relevant enough. Spellbreaker obviously does nothing here. Greenskin is the reason that Snowman held onto this weapon last turn. We've decided that's what we're probably going to have to do. We're going to have to give this the buff. It's not ideal. But it's it's okay. I'd rather turn it into a 2-3 than a 2-2. Two, two. The 5-4 on the board is more the draw here than, exactly. than the 2-3 weapon. Yeah. Is Jade Behemoth even good enough here? I don't think it is. I think we have, we have to look at a swipe. Swipe hero power is a full clear, and then you can wild growth, so you have oh, that's so rough. 10 mana next turn. Wild growthing up, just the difference between 9 and 10 mana, huh? What to do? Jade Behemoth on its own. We're on 3-3 three, three Jade Golems. It does put up a 3-6 with Taunt. It would take everything except Captain Greenskin currently on the board to trade into it. Captain Greenskin would be pushing the face for 5. Leroy would be pushing the face for another 6. But there's a Spellbreaker, which does change things slightly, but it doesn't increase the damage because it would mean that Italy don't have the mana to play Leroy. Yeah, I'm going to go with the swipe, the hero power. I don't think they play the wild growth. I think they're going to just assume that they, they have they can stick around for long enough to play Jade Behemoth as Carol Rage next turn and Wild Growth for a card draw a little bit later. Maybe they run Yogg-Saron. We've seen a lot of Yogg-Saron today. possible. We've Druid. seen it in Jade Druid for sure. Twice already. That would certainly be one way to swing this back in their favor. Primordial Drake would be another. Um, or just a string of, of taunt minions. So Jade Behemoth into Jade Behemoth. There's no large weapon for Italy, which is a little bit of a relief for Mexico because, you know, Arcanet Reaper upgrade here, whatever, would be able to just get through yeah. the taunts and the minions would then just be pushing face consistently. Yeah, Poe Warriors struggle when they don't get any of their big weapons. Unfortunately, this rusty hook is having to do all of the work. But putting Empazonado down to 10. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Empanizado. <laughs> Cora's really trying to help me here, guys. I don't know what's no, wrong with you me. You do you. You're good. It's been a long day. Oh, I man. I can't say it. I can't say the word, Cora. It's, it's okay. My mouth just doesn't make those movements. It's all right. <sighs> My brain can't count lethal. We can't pronounce names. It. So it has to be... It's okay. I think it has to be Jade Behemoth Feral Rage here. Beat yourself up to 18. Relatively safe. That plays around any chance of a Spellbreaker, which is very common in Pirate Warrior at the moment. Is Primordial Drake valid? No. Well, as we, as we can see... Uh, this this oh. is just more more uh, mana efficient. Spellman wouldn't have had lethal because, again, he wouldn't have been able to play the Spellbreaker with the with the Leroy, but look at that, a second Spellbreaker. Ooh, Spellbreakers. Just play one now, why not? Uh, yeah. There's no reason not to. Whereas before, if he hadn't drawn the second one, yeah, he'd have probably had to start mm. trading here, but now... There is nothing blocking it. One, uh, one weapon follow up from this Arcanite Reaper, or even Fiery War Axe, would be pretty dang close to finishing this game up. The, uh, the frustrating thing for Italy is that they're still, even next to not going to be able to play the second Spellbreaker and Leroy Jenkins. Mm -hmm. They're just killing Mexico too fast. <laughs> Poor them. Okay, okay, fair point. <laughs> Your magic shall so you can push seven. Essentially undoing the Feral Rage. Yeah. So next turn is the Spellbreaker, and then the following turn is the Leroy. But Italy needs just a little bit more damage. Primordial Drake plus the trades are going to completely clear Italy's board, so he's not quite there yet. Snowman, just as you said, he needs to pick up just an Arcanite Reaper or something to push that last little bit. Mexico can hero power up to 12 as well. Um, they leave themselves with a 3-1, and then the 4-8 taunt. Taunt gets silenced. 
And then Leroy does six, but you do need a couple more repetitive damage pushes to finish the game up. Spellbreaker plus... There's the Arcanite Reaper! Can't play it this turn, though. No, so we've still got, what, three more turns before it's lethal here? Spellbreaker yeah. this turn, Arcanite Reaper next turn, then Leroy the turn after that. Plus the Arcanite Reaper second swing. And that's yeah. if there is no more health gain, and there's still an additional Feral Rage and two Earth and Scales in the deck, and no other taunt. There's another Jade Behemoth and another Primordial Drake. So that's... What now? Five outs. Right there. Out 20, so one in four. Yeah, so one in four to draw something that keeps this game going longer, may even just close this game up. All right, so still strong chance for Team Mexico here to begin their reverse sweep, begin their comeback. Arcanite Reaper now. Uh, is that is that any different in any way to playing Spellbreaker first? Uh, oh, he's going to kill it. I think you can keep Spellbreaker around for, for the next taunt. The next taunt? Mm -hmm. But that's assuming there is a next taunt. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that. I don't know that I'd throw 10 into this. Because, if, yeah, if you have to throw 10 into it now, then is the risk of there being a second taunt that you just throw 10 into that taunt, but it's yeah. still... Like, Spellbreaker silences this, the Behemoth trades into the Spellbreaker, and then, yeah, you just hope they don't have another taunt. Swipe, that's not going to do it. Uh-uh. For Mexico. Wild Growth does give an additional draw, however. That's true. That was the one in... That was the one in four. Now a one in 19. I'm not going to... I'm not going to shorten it anymore. <laughs> Now a one and nine. My entire voice in my head. That's also a calculator. Are you there? Do you, do you have the Do you have the numbers? <laughs> well, eighteen divided by. I got the best who knows? All right. Well, I think this next turn from Snowman is obvious. Just gonna go ahead, Spellbreaker, and start smacking the face. Now, that Gadget and Auctioneer has a high chance of actually dealing some damage to Team Italy. Auctioneer into... Well, he's got... Uh, Mexico's got the swipe as well. Any cheap mm -hmm. Jade card Your will get Mexico closer to Earthen Scales. Yep. Second copy of Feral Rage. Mm -hmm. Two of the remaining taunts in the build. The Euro plus Arcanite Reaper is 11 damage. So if Mexico can gain even four health, they've done it! Primordial Drake! is good enough to buy them another turn. But, do Mexico play it? I I'm pretty sure they have to. To trade the 3-1 in and then play the trade. Oh yeah, 100%. And then hero power, you're up to nine. I wonder if can Even double mortal strike from hand doesn't kill you then? Yeah. yeah. I just wonder if there would be any discussion about playing swipe and starting to dig through the deck, but I'm certain that that's wrong. Primordial Drake just seems super safe. You've you already put a tick there next to next to the Druid. Mm. Calling it nice and early. Wonder. There's no way the word gets through the Druid. You're not wrong. I, I, I mean, I don't disagree. Okay, with you. heroic strike. There, there is a series of draws where on, we wait. can make this happen. Stay with me here. Iron Beak out. You lost me. Oh, okay. Never Sorry. Mind. Iron Beak out would just be lethal. If they're would. running two Spellbreakers, I just... And an Iron Beak side. Owl. But no, that seems... It's, it's Silence Pirate Warrior. <laughs> That's pretty unlikely. Yeah, means... So, Heroic Strike this turn still wouldn't end up being enough because Mexico would hero power to 10 next turn and Leroy Fire Wax is only 9. So it needed to be Heroic Strike this turn and then they needed to also draw Upgrade next turn for it to be 10. Or like South Sea Deckhand, right. or Second Heroic Strike. So there, there definitely were out, but this, this needed to be not a like thing Heroic thing. Strike, Mortal Strike. What was interesting to me is that Snowman threw away both of his Frothing Berserkers in his Mulligan. He did. Uh, now, I wonder if that was expecting an aggro Druid and believing that Frothing Berserker just isn't fast enough to deal with it, because Frothing Berserker seems pretty strong to me against J Druid. It absolutely is. Uh, the only thing that it really dies to directly is Swipe, which is often too expensive for the Druid to actually play on Curve. 
So a frothing keep would have maybe given Snowman some additional damage in the early game. Well, now you swipe. Game's still not over. Because though. yeah, now you swipe, but I mean, oh, it's the just game's over. over. All right, <laughs> game's still not over. He says, as there is lethal on the board. Hey, I got this one, guys. I'm so bad at this today. Oh my, my brains. It's tuckered out a little bit. Not gonna lie. Well, game three does go to M. Panizado. Done Just and right? dusted. Got Fantastic right. job. You nailed it. For his, for his big good. win, we got there. I'm so sorry, Mexico, don't hate me. And oh man, Italy aren't through yet. They're still uh, possibly a couple games away. Mexico have begun what could end up being a reverse sweep. It could be the big comeback of today. We haven't seen any reverse sweeps. Only one 3-2 series, a couple of 3-1s. Um, and two three zeros right at the beginning of the day. So we've had the whole wide range of outcomes throughout the day today. We've really seen it all. And this is going to be our final winner takes it all. Win and go through to the top eight. Lose and you are done. Now uh, let's take a look at the next game. It's going to be Urban G versus Turner, I believe. Yep. Ooh, Priest versus Shaman. We've not seen much Priest today. We saw no, that we haven't. Weird sort of silence Priest, which uh, the team at the time admitted to us isn't mm -hmm. actually a silence Priest. It's just kind of a... And then we did see one strict silence Priest as well. And then we did see one mm -hmm. strict silence Priest. So I, I still think this could be anything. I didn't expect to see any silence Priest today, if I'm being completely honest. Yeah. I expect the Miracle or even the Dragon Priest to be, to be the more commonly played decks. But who knows? We've seen two silence-ish priests so far. Two decks with silence <laughs> and inner fire divine spirit. And one of them was a silence priest. It was. If I'm not even going to speculate you know, about what this priest could possibly be. And we've seen three different kinds of shamans now today as well. So all across the board, these teams have been bringing very different archetypes. It, it takes a lot of words to describe a lot of the decks in, our, in Hearthstone at the moment. Uh, like, especially when you come to mage, like yes, it's sort of a discover mage and sort of a and freeze it's mage. It's kind of more aggressive, but it also has <laughs> medieval, right? And and ice blocks. Yeah, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of words. And then you're like paladin. It has murlocs, but it also has <laughs> nizah. Gone are the days where you could just say yeah, combat druid. <laughs> gets weird. It is. Artstone gets weird right now. It's pretty weird. But again, we're in this incredible place where. All of the classes are just so versatile. They are. And then don't forget Knights of the Frozen Throne oh. coming out next month. Oh. The new Hearthstone expansion. So excited. We've only seen a couple of cards from it so far, um, but there there will be an undead version of each of the nine classic heroes. So so far we've seen... Th things the, are going to get weirder. We've seen Rexar who's going to be summoning mm -hmm. his zombie, zombie, zombie beasts. Zombie beasts. The zombies. Uh, I, 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 thankfully, they, they have to be uh, five mana or cheaper, the zombies that make up this beast. Mm -hmm. I was worried that they could be like Vicious High Mane or something. Oh, God. It could, be, uh, could be pretty scary. Terrifying. And Stone no. Tusk High Mane. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Stone Tusk Fledgling is, is pretty terrifying, terrifying in itself. But anyways, it's going to be Dragon Priest by the looks of it, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dragon Priest, possibly, maybe, and Evolve Shaman, definitely, yes. Because there's Evolve and it's Shaman. Now, if we get to turn eight, then that Primordial Drake uh, can do a pretty good job of just shutting down the Shaman. Obviously, Dragonfire Potion is another fantastic card in this matchup. The Shaman does have the potential of just building up this board and getting that Bloodlust off too soon for the, for the um, Priest to be able to deal with it. But the later we do get into the game, the nastier it looks for the Priest. The Priest does have an okay time at combating the early game. Shadowward Pain, Potion of Madness is going to be absolutely pivotal. And then when you get into the mid game, uh, Dragonfire Potion is going to be the almighty equalizer here. There we can see it, but the early game is quite a bit weak for Italy. So if Mexico can put on early pressure, spiral the game out of control, uh, it will be theirs to win. Sea Giant, not a card that's going to serve Mexico that well in this matchup. A card that's uh, seen quite a bit in Shaman recently, but it's mostly there to target other Shaman uh, and other more aggressive decks. So not going to do all too much against the Priest that can just Shadow Word Death it away, especially as there aren't that many targets for Shadow Word Death in this matchup. Pretty bad start for Irvin G as well. Yeah, he slow on both sides. He'd love a Firefly. He'd love a... a totem 
Primal Fin Totem, that's mm -hmm. the one. Bloodsail Corsair, Patches. Any of those cards would be, well, maybe not Patches. <laughs> patches from the Bloodsail yes. Corsair. I, I know what you mean, I know what you mean. Um, no, I advocate for drawing Patches, 10 <laughs> times out of 10. Draw Patches in all your deck. Oh, hey, there's a Flame Tongue Totem there. And it worked out for Netherlands. <laughs> it did. <laughs> it did. Yeah, so you said it's a bad start for both sides here, and I do agree with you, but at the same time, the Priest doesn't need the fast start quite as much as the Shaman does. Even if the Priest starts with a Glimmer Root on turn 3 and then maybe buff it up on turn 4 with a Powered Shield, that's fine if Irvin G hasn't put anything on the board yet. It's up to Irvin G to just wipe the Priest out as fast as possible. It's up to Turner to just stop him from doing that. More than the priest needs a fast start, the priest needs the shaman to have a slow start. Yep. They have gotten a bit fortunate with that in this case. Yeah, so Mexico just a hero powering here. Now, if I was on Team Italy, I wouldn't be expecting Bloodlust Evolve, Token, whatever you want to call it, Sean. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think this was much slower at this point. Yeah. What, what, from what we've seen earlier, turn two, hero power. Uh, so. Okay, Jade Lightning. <laughs> yeah, but that's in, that's in all of the decks, though. Yeah, okay, so if this was a slightly different lineup of cards, maybe uh, maybe this could have fooled Italy. I mean, if like if Hex was up here, or Lightning right. Storm. Like, maybe you would start to think maybe, that... Maybe if Hex or Devolve are the options, like, maybe you'd pick the Hex... Uh, I don't know. Uh, Devolve's in all I mean, it's it's definitely Jade Lightning. Yeah, this one's not going to trick Italy. And actually, it also gives Italy the information that there's no Tidal Surge and that there's no Earth Elemental, which is also valuable information for Turner, who has no idea what this deck is at the moment. Flame Tongue Totem, Coin, Jade, Claws could be okay-ish, but not really. Someone's a 1-1, one, one, clears the 3-3, three, three, puts Flame Tongue Totem on the board. I guess Stonehill Defender's fine. It still leaves Italy with no real idea of what Mexico are playing, and it sets up for later on. It's tough, cool. Even Jade Lightning seems reasonable. Depends if you want to kind of hit the board now mm -hmm. with the Flame Tongue Totem, or if you want to just wait and play it nice and patient. You don't really have anything that you're saving your coin for right now. Yeah, it's, the, it's more the Flame Tongue Totem I'm worried about. Is it worth saving that? If you coin Jade Lightning, then you do have two targets on board for the Flame Tongue on turn four that you can play yep. alongside Jade Claws. So yep. I think that's pretty smooth. All right, gonna go with that play. Yeah, it seems fine. of the feast. Pretty valuable later on once the priest has start ta started to take damage, but unfortunately Priest of the Feast doesn't prevent the mad bloodlust lethals, which is what this shaman deck is all about. Also, don't forget, Turner has no idea what he's playing against right now. If I was Turner, I would definitely be expecting this to be a, sh a slower shaman. You probably expect that rather than a fast shaman with a terrible with a start. really bad start. You you're hoping fast shaman with a horrible start. Oh yeah, yeah. But you're thinking probably a slower build. So my, my mind would be on Spirit Echo here. Priest of this Beast just going to come down, contest the board with as big a minion as possible. Now that Flame Tongue Totem could come into its own, make these trades, Jade Claws will finish the job. That seems reasonable. Otherwise, Stonehill Defender. If Mexico really want to play a confusing game, they can drop Stonehill Defender and still leave Turner with no idea what Herfin G is playing. But I think this may be the turn to play the Flame Tongue and the Jade Claws. It's the only way to actually immediately get rid of them. Yeah, I mean, before you push any damage, Priest of the Feast needs to die. Yeah. That's the way. That's the way to do it. It's a bit unfortunate that the Golems spawn on the right side. You'd much rather have it on the left because totems spawn on the right. Sure. Hopefully it'll just get a trade at some point soon. Yeah. So Mexico have to think. But uh, Italy's forcing Mexico to take this game very slowly. Also, their their poor draw has put them in this yeah. situation, which is really ideal for Turner and Italy. 
Turner should no longer have any illusions about what he's playing against. Flametong Totem mm -hmm. isn't actually run in any of the slow shaman decks at the moment. Only the fast ones. So, if it means anything, it's going to have... And that will finish the... Uh, <laughs> Wow. Gotta put the final answer in Italy's head. They know there's a Jade Lightning. That's pretty good. Now they know there's no Jade Spirit. Mm -hmm. They'll be 100% certain on what the stack is. So you paint away the Flame Tongue. Yeah. Try to ensure the double trade into the Glimmer Root. Now Italy just needs to sustain. They just need to last out and make sure they've always got the resources they need to get rid of a board that the Shaman can create. Dragonfire Potion. Uh, so the far left of Turner's hands going to be vital for the priest to win this game. Another kind of unfulfilling turn here for Mexico. Thing from below plays on curve, but you're gonna have to trade into this Glimmer Root. This could be one of those games where the priest ends up with bigger jade golems than the shaman. Oh, that'd be a little bit weird. It's quite possible. I've played games as the priest where that's happened, that you can you can grab Aya from um, Draconid Operative, and you can grab it several times because you can mm. generate more Draconid Operatives, mm -hmm. play the two that are already in your deck, just keep grabbing Aya. However, Aya is in Mexico's hand already, so that's not going to be happening this game. But, you know, those jade lightnings, they're still in the deck. <laughs> Well, we, uh... One of them is, anyway. Yeah, we saw the one get played. So Glimmerroot pulling Jade Lightning. The same Jade Lightning twice. Well, Glimmerroot can can draw... Can pull from cards Any that card. have been mm -hmm. played, yeah. But still, that's a... It might be different. Two out of... 30. Okay, Tempo Bookworm, sure. It's kind of unfortunate against this specific deck. Not only are you losing some of your dragon synergy in hand, Ooh, but you're Doppelganger Evolve. Weird thing from below on the board. Thing from below which can trade into the bookworm and survive. That looks like too good a turn to pass up on. Dragonfire Potion could do some work here in response, but I think, I mean, it's this or Aya. You don't necessarily need to Doppelganger Evolve this turn. Ah, oh, that's true. It seems juicy because you've already got the six drop on the board, which will then become the seven drop and heal itself. Mm -hmm. But on average, these minions are probably only going to have five health. So maybe the threat of Dragonfire Potion is just too much at the moment. Seven drops aren't that much better than six drops. They're not, are they? No. They're not quite their difference in mana's worth in stats. Mm -hmm. We're going for it, though. Nice. Well, nothing now. Seven, six, five, five. 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 All right. Uh, Chogall's about as good as you well, can expect from a 7-drop. The Harbinger's interesting. Dragonfire Potion is super strong here because it allows the Bookworm to then trade into the Chogall, leaving just the uh, mm. Harbinger on the board. That's actually kind of funny. The Harbinger at the end of your turn puts a 10-drop from your deck into your hand, and the Sea Giants are 10-drops, but they've been discounted. So I, uh, I don't think it'll pull. M maybe it's at the start of your turn. So maybe it still will. Yeah, I don't know how it works myself, actually. I think it is actually, at the start of your turn, put a 10-drop from your deck into your hand. And it was intended to be used with the old gods. Yeah, for sure. So I, I wonder if it will work with Sea Giant. It would. And you're right, it, it is It is hmm. the start of your turn. Yeah. I don't even know if there is a Curious. Sea Giant. That, oh, that's possible that there isn't. So we're, we're not going to, unless it does pull a Sea Giant, we're not going to know either way, unfortunately. No. Nope, no Sea Giant. All right. So it's either counted the discount or there just isn't a second Sea Giant. Either way, it didn't work. <laughs> so you want Nether Spite to come down before Primordial Drake. Because Ideally. it's very likely that it can net you another Primordial Drake. Nether Spite plus Jade Lightning plus uh, Power Shield plus Cleric actually seems like a decent turn here. Alternatively, just Nether Spite and... Draconid Operative. If you get a Draconid Operative from this Nether Spite. But you're right, just getting more Primordial Drakes is fine from the Nether Spite too in this matchup. Jade Lightning gonna come down. Both Jade Lightning's gonna come down by the looks of it and just deal with this Aya nice and quickly. Both created by Curious Glimmer. That's pretty funny. Sea <laughs> Giant is playable now. 
Sea Giant will be playable even if Mexico plays this Primal Fin Totem and then Totems up. Mm -hmm. Or they could just play Stonehill Defender. Maybe get a Gold Shire Footman, play that as well, and then play Sea Giant. Crazy. I think Sea Giant's definitely slotted for this turn, regardless. Yeah. Evan G just needs to work out how he wants to put this turn together, what the other minions are that he wants to play with the Sea Giant. You can Maelstrom Portal. I'm um, gonna get to a minion. So maybe you maybe you hero power first and see if you get spell though. damage. Yeah, the minions that that that, the that, that would be minus one then. Yeah. Or minus two if it hits spell damage. Mm -hmm. Well Maelstrom gives you oh, that one minion, one. so right. minus one total. Alright, didn't see what the other options were, but Sunwalker. It's a perfectly fine pick. It's good against Priest too. For some reason. Can't tell you why. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Let that one out yourself. <laughs> there is a Shadow of Death there, ready to just take out the Sea Giant immediately. Which I think has to be how Italy start this turn. Then you can follow up with... Actually, you can Twilight Drake first if you want to. Yeah, that's true. And then Death and Nether Spite. Mm hmm. Guess you know the spike first if you've decided that's, uh, yeah, that's what you're the way do. to go. Just in case it gives you a dragon you'd prefer to play. Guardian rotated, so other four drop dragons. There's really not a lot of dragon options, which is why this dragon priest actually works, because you're you're pretty limited to the legendary dragons and then the high quality dragons. Dragon like it operative. Just dragon it operative. You're picking him up. Primordial Drake, exactly. Oh, and these. Death, I mean, Deathwing's fine against this deck, right? Wow. <laughs> they grabbed that fast. Yeah, it's just a panic button. If they get to the point where the Shaman has put up a board, if they get to the point where Bloodlust would mean lethal, just drop Deathwing. Stop them from winning the game. Should have played the Drake before the Shadow or Death there. That was yes. uh, a slight, slight mis misordering, yeah. yeah. So one less health on the Drake. That's Bloodlust. 17 damage right now. We haven't seen a pirate yet from Evan G, have we? I don't think we've seen patches. No, we have not. That's terrifying. That's very scary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. A Jade Lightning this from Evan G would be lethal here. Jade Claws. I mean, this Jade this claws. may just be the best Bloodlust you're going to get. So you might just have to to go with it this turn. You could even play Maelstrom, Maelstrom Portal. Portal could get you patches. Or Sometas Ball. And that would be lethal. Okay. Just treat Trickster. Eh. Yeah, these cards don't These do are anything. some pretty good results. Okay. This is risky. You're just kind of assuming your board gets bigger and not smaller. Uh -huh. Primordial Drake could see to that. The, the healing You've totem. You've seen a good amount of clear so far. The healing totem would at least heal up the Stonehill Defender out of range. But Primordial Drake would take out the Harbinger, would take out the healing totem itself. And the Divine Pop Shield. The divine Shield, exactly. But would Bloodlust still be lethal? So Italy can heal up to 13. Yeah. And then there would be uh, five power on board spread across three minions. We've seen one Devolve, but what if there was a second? Like, Devolve Bloodlust is something that Mexico actually have to think about. Mm. Sorry, that Italy actually has to think yeah. about. Yeah, so is Deathwing just... It may have to be played Correct. this turn, but that, that feels so bad and is so weak against the Sunwalker. Deathwing just bouncing off of that Divine Shield. I'm gonna go with the Primordial Drake, the slightly riskier option. As you said, I imagine Turner's gonna heal up his face. He could consider playing the Powered Shield on the Primordial Drake, though that's even weaker to a second uh, uh, Devolve. Okay. <laughs> Italy just pretending there is only one Devolve. <laughs> and there may only be one. I think most decks are definitely running to. All right, so there's Corsair, which nets oh, you patches. Sorry. And then the Bloodlust. 18 damage so total, so it's not quite enough. 10 to go in, yeah. There's 21 health that the Priest has right now. I, there's not an even way that you can put all this damage in. You'll be overkilling it by at least one. Yes. So, and even if there was a perfect way, it's still slightly off. So, mm -hmm. okay, Turner, pretty safe at the moment. If there was a Devolve, then Turner would just be dead unless the Drake did turn into a Bog Creeper or something. Yeah. Now Mexico have to work out how they're going to get rid of this 
irritating dragon. You may just have to bloodlust and hope that you can find the other one. I think that's perfectly reasonable. How's that sound you love so much? Oh, it's great. Oh, that's oh no, you won't be overkilling it. Duh. Still three off, though. Yeah, but G may decide he has to trade some of this in. Kill everything, I guess. Put out Primal Fin. And then actually, Sunwalker is a huge annoyance for Deathwing. Yeah, right. To get past. A second Primordial Drake would be massive here for Italy, and they've got and a chance to get spite it. for it. You have a very high chance of getting it. It's not a class dragon, which means dragon and operative is more likely. It's just not worth it. If there was a second Deathwing, uh, sorry, if there was a second Bloodlust. I love the new Deathwing. Uh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Entrance, it's it's awesome. True. Deathwing and Blood Mage got new ones. Yeah. Now that Deathwing is sorry, that Summoner is annoying for the Deathwing. Mm. It'll take two hits to get rid of it, all the while dealing eight damage to the Deathwing, while the Summoner just ignores it and goes face. Potion of Madness or That's, no, not Shadow or Pain. That's kind of helpful. Gets rid of one of the. Obviously, you're right. Potion of Madness would have or been Dragon much, Fire much there would have been great. Dragon Fire would have been huge. So. Though. Bloodlust would be lethal. That's a scary thought. And as Italy now know, they weren't under the threat of Bloodlust last turn. Mm -hmm. Urban G has emptied his hand. It looks like Nether Spy Historian to try and get the pri the, the uh, Primordial Drake would have just been better. Because they wouldn't have been dead anyway. There was no Bloodlust. There wasn't the damage to kill Italy on the board. <sighs> or in the hand. Yeah. But it's impossible for them to know that. Of course. I mean, Mexico mm. refilled so quickly. It looked, like, it looked like they were playing to two bloodlusts. Firefly does help to do that as well. The refill. It's one of the reasons it's become such a strong card. Oh, oh, there it is. We are going to go to the oh ace match my God. in this game. This is crazy. Open G continuing the streak for Mexico. Are we about to see a reverse sweep? Oh, it's very possible. This is, it didn't seem possible considering the first couple of decks that Mexico brought and how those first two games went so incredibly in favor of Italy. But the last two have been very close and very Mexico favored. And it really looks like we were getting to the point in that game where Italy was starting it's, to overcome It seemed like the they threat. were over, over the line. Dragonfire like Potion had, had been played. Primordial Drake came down. Deathwing cleared the board one more time, but Mexico, Irvin G managed to manage their resources exactly how they needed to, got the bloodlust at the right time, and, and that's the game. Let's take a look at the ace match coming up. It's Turner on the Shaman versus Empanina. Empanizado. On the warrior, okay, got that. Nailed that. it. All right. Beautiful. <laughs> I just can't say the word for some reason. It's okay. I'm gonna sign a petition to All get right. a name change. I guarantee okay. if Empanizado wins this, he won't care that okay. you can't say his name. So Shaman versus Warrior. But what if he loses this? Well then he'll, he, he'll have other things to care about than you not being able to say his name. All right. I'm still sorry. We've seen a bunch of Shamans. We've seen two kinds of Warrior. Yeah. Um, Taunt and Quest? Yeah. Taunt and Quest are the same one. Taunt and Pirate. We've seen them in about equal shares, actually. I expected yeah. to see more Pirate. It's been kind of down the middle. But I guess Quest, people are more keen to bring it because of the fact that Quest Rogue is gone. Quest Rogue was strong against Taunt Warrior. So. I think the Taunt Warrior has actually been doing a little bit better. Pirate Warrior has, has struggled. In this series for Italy, it, it lost to the Jade Druid. <laughs> and Jade Druid is more prevalent now. It does handle Pirate Warrior all right. It's something we found in the Hearthstone Global Games over the last maybe three or so weeks, specifically. Pirate Warrior just hasn't been able to get over that last little hurdle. Mm. It just really struggles at the end there. It shows it's a very well-designed deck. It's down to the skill of the person piloting it and the skill of the person that plays against him. If, if the opponent, the Pirate Warrior, is able to just hang in there for that last little bit until they can get that Spike Witch Steed down, get that Feral Rage, get these Taunt, whatever it is, then uh, the Pirate Warrior just doesn't always make it. They get very close, and I think that's what we saw. Italy had two copies of Spellbreaker in their list because they want to try to eliminate that situation where a Behemoth or a Primordial Drake comes down and they're just, you know, that one attack off of lethal. 
but we did actually see that very situation happen. Two Spellbreakers weren't enough if they'd had three or an Iron Beak Owl or some other form of silence, they would have won the game, but they needed that just one additional piece. It just wasn't enough. Yeah, it just didn't quite do it, but we're going to have to see if Mexico are bringing their Pirate Warrior, which they may not be, we have to see if they'll be able to get over the final hurdle against the Shaman. Now, Shaman, we've seen Shaman, we've seen Token Shaman way back this morning lose against Pirate Warrior. Mm -hmm. But again, the later we get into that game, the wider the Shaman gets, the more totems the Shaman is able to bring out. The more the Pirate Warrior has to start making these irritating trades, start hitting Thing from below, start hitting Stonehill Defenders, start hitting Taunt Totems, and the more time the Shaman can get. And the Shaman can win that game quite easily in the late game. However, if the Pirate Warrior gets the start they need, they can just steamroll and win in the early game. That one, I would say, is very close because the Shaman does, like you said, uh, have all of those taunts. They have the Stone Claw Totem, uh, just naturally they can press that Hero Power button every turn and have a chance to roll that Taunt Totem, which the Pirate Warrior is often forced to overkill. Stone Hill Defender can net a couple of discounted Thing From Belows or Hot Spring Guardian, which you can then heal with. It has the resources to be able to challenge, not to mention Maelstrom Portal in the early game, Jade Claws, Jade Lightning, the works. Right. So I think, I think the Shaman's actually pretty well positioned there against the warrior. The warrior needs a bang up start to be able to really get to the point in the game where the shaman's taunts don't don't impact the game at all. Just, um, but if it's taunt warrior and the shaman's something different, then everything changes. Just gotta run this one at home real quick. Um, this is such a big game for these guys. Yeah. One game to decide whether Mexico or Italy will be going through to the top eight. The other team will be will be leaving us for good in the Hearthstone Global Games. Now Italy, again, I've been backing them right since right close to the beginning. Italy almost won their group. They went 4-0 in their mm -hmm. group and then lost the fifth game and unfortunately didn't end up winning their group. But yeah. a dominating performance at the beginning. Mexico, they've had a pretty good ride too, haven't they? I think, I think Mexico also went 4-1. Um, they did end up winning their group. Both of these teams are underdog teams that people didn't expect anything from. And now here they are. One of them will be moving on to the top eight in this tournament. Both of them had stellar performances in phase one and phase two of this tournament. It is a bit unfortunate that they have to face off against each other um, when yeah. both of them would be so deserving to move on, but it's been a good series after we got past the first couple of really weird games. Same sort of disappointment I felt when uh, when Greece had to play against Brazil, when, sorry, that's not right, when Netherlands had to play against Brazil, yes. when Ukraine had to play against Austria. Some of my favorite Those teams good games. knocking each other out, but it's gonna happen. We're at the late stage of the competition now. Our favorite teams, the, one we, the ones we've been watching for all of these weeks, the ones that have gone through, now they're gonna have to start kicking each other out. As we see this final game of the day, it's going to be, um, I was about to say Jay Druid, hang on a sec. It's gonna there be the Token games. Shaman. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Druid? I don't know, way off. It's going to be Token Shaman versus the uh, the Quest Warrior. So, this is a tricky matchup for Italy, I think, because the Warrior has so many board clears. Whirlwinds, Ravaging Ghouls, Sleep with the Fishes, Brawl. There are so, uh, Primordial Drakes. There are so many ways that the Warrior can just put the Shaman at bay. But the Shaman does have Doppelgangster Evolve in hand, ready to go. They're going to need more than that, though. The Shaman needs early game. Yeah. What I found is that the Shaman can often steal this game, steal this matchup at turn five or turn six with an early Bloodlust after getting a board full of Murlocs with the Primal Fin Totem. However, Turner's hand is not early game heavy. We're in another position where the, the Agro Shaman has just drawn horrifically, though it didn't work out so badly for Mexico in the last game. Another really okay. slow draw here. Going to give Empanizado in Mexico time to build up the resources that they need to combat the eventual aggression that will come out from the Shaman, but it's honestly quite a weak start for, for both teams here. Mexico would like to have three drop taunt options in hand along with, you know, a Bloodhoof Brave and an Ellie Armorsmith. They want to curve out taunts because that's ultimately one of the best ways to combat smaller minions on board is just put walls up that they're forced to go through. Right. Having to just turn them up on turn two is bad. Mexico probably thinking that we're due for another long game like we had earlier, another uh, Jade Shaman slow deck versus the Quest Warrior, but that Shaman is going to speed up at some point. The main question is when, and will it be too late? And Panizado may decide that he's going to just fire Warax down this spell damage totem. Spell damage totems are sometimes worth it, but I think in this position where it's not doing much, Mexico are probably just going to ignore it. I'm fine with Fire War Axe, but yeah, I'm not hitting this. Yeah. No way. That that War Axe is going to be saved for Mana Tide Totem, Flame Tongue Totem, Primal Fin Totem. Yeah, of course. Though, 
none of those cards present yet in Italy's hand. Italy just going to tote them up again. Team Mexico probably convinced at this point that this is a slow shaman. Even though they were the ones uh, tricking, tricking Italy earlier, it's now going to be the other way around. Sleep with the Fish is a big draw for Mexico here. They just need something to set it off. They yeah, all of these cards are going to be, you know, invaluable later. Mm -hmm. Right now, they're just not doing much. Yeah. Huh. Is this something you're just going to have to totem up again? You can actually play a four mana thing from below. That feels so bad. But at the same time, it is something that Empezonado may not be able to deal with. <sighs> Fiery War Axe into Execute? That feels a bit wasteful. War Axe, Sleep with the Fishes, also wasteful against this deck. Sleep with the Fishes is... I would say more valuable than Execute. I agree, yeah. Against this, this Shaman deck, 100%. Because Whirlwind Fishes will usually kill off mm -hmm. everything. Except in this case, Thing from Below. And then you have Brawl for Doppelgangster Evolve. Maybe Mexico just keep it alive. Let's not get hasty. All right. <laughs> I think this is fine. And then we're looking at... You don't want to play Jones on five because you know there's Jade Claws in these builds. Something's got to give. Eventually, you need to develop some pressure. That goes for both of these teams. Uh, Flame Tomb Turner would be such a great draw if there was a way of putting down a taunt. If if there was a Stonehill Defender in Turner's oh, hand, fantastic. this would be a great sequence. But without any way of protecting the Flame Tongue Totem, I don't think that Italy want to throw it down. At the same time, they can't really afford to drop Doppelgangster. Because if that did just get dealt with, that would be a huge waste. Hero Power Maelstrom Portal is a way of going wide and maybe trying to bait out some sort of brawl. Actually, okay, so Italy can Hero Power first if they get the Flame Tongue Totem, which they didn't. Sorry, if they get the Taunt Totem, which they didn't, then they may have considered playing Flame Tongue. But as they only got the Healing Totem, they lost the 50 50 there. The rest of this turn is tricky. Turner going to go for it anyway. He acknowledges that he has to start dealing this damage. But that was an unfortunate roll of the totem there. Ah. Uh. Well, that's pretty sweet. Still don't need it right now. <laughs> the fact but. that it's not necessary makes it even sweeter, though. Yeah. It can be saved until it is necessary. You're getting all of the resources that you will need. And eventually this hand is going to be you know, nigh unbeatable by what Italy can put on board. Can I just say we were confused at the start. Mexico ran the, uh, the weird aggro rogue. They, they played Warlock. Warlock. But they have. They've switched. They've started playing more standard decks. And actually, oh. I, I think they look favored here. This might be the end for Team they, Italy. They look like they've got answers to just about everything. They've got the Ravaging Girl Sleep with the Fishes. They've got a Brawl. They've got a Primordial Drake for later. Huh. I think the play this turn is just whack the Flame Tongue Totem and armor up. Just no reason to play anything else. They are just three totems that are doing nothing. Harrison? Sure, okay, put something on the board, why not? Not that the two cards off of, or one card in most cases from Jade Claws would change anything, so no. the 5 4 body is just going to be more impactful yep. right here. And then this means that Mexico can go coin into Curator on six if they want. Mm -hmm. um, they don't necessarily need Drake on eight because they have Ravaging Ghoul plus Sleep with the Fishes yep. and they'll pick up an additional Drake plus a Direhorn Hatchling, which they can play on, on seven if they really want to. So their curve is looking really fantastic now. Italy has a lot of threats. This would be a great you know, doppelgangster evolve but you do need to ride the line between developing too much on board and developing enough to put on pressure. Yeah. It's it's a dance, as we've been describing it often over here in the, uh, in it's the a, EU It's office. a tough one it has to been get a, right. It's been a dance ever since previous um, Shaman with the Thunder Bluff Valiance, et cetera, against Brawls. Unfortunately, this, this is a lot of Turner's resources that are just about to be brawled away, or even... Uh, Sleep with the Fishes isn't quite good enough, is it? It's, it'd be one damage off killing Illidan. Mm -hmm. And the Lightwell. And the Lightwell too, yeah. So Brawl makes a lot of sense here. 
smack face first with Harrison. Plus, you will have Primordial Drake plus Sleep with the Fishes. Yeah. Um, including a second copy of that when you play Curator and get the second Drake. And that's that's even better than Ghoul Fishes. Illidan Storm Rage, another classic legendary we're seeing today. We had Lorewalker Cho earlier. We had <laughs> Gruul earlier. And now we've got good old Illidan. It's a shame that Turner hasn't been able to play any minions since playing it and, and likely won't get to at all because uh, the Auctioneer would have been drawing cards. The Illidan would have been summoning guys. If Illidan or Gadgets and Auctioneer survive this brawl, though, it could be pretty big for Turner. Ah, oh, the Auctioneer was the last minion to die. Unfortunately, just Blue Gill Warrior survives this. That's so unfortunate ah. for Team Italy. That's actually really bad for them. Yeah. They, they needed something big to stick, and they needed to push damage. Illidan now. or Auctioneer would have both mm -hmm. been huge. Oh, it would have been fantastic. Auctioneer may have just even been better because of the way that the two Unflames of Azanoth line up with all of the Whirlwind effects from Mexico. Right, yeah. T even just the fact that Illidan would have been seven damage to the face that turn. It would have been great. Was, was, is relevant. Mm -hmm. that, would have, that, would have put, that would have put Mexico down to, what, 15 health? No, 16 health. And then Mexico <laughs> would have had to <laughs> respond in some way, shape, or form this turn to that Illidan instead of developing their own minions if they want. Yep. So you could just curator and ignore Ravaging Ghoul plus fishes. Ravaging Ghoul coin die on Hatchling seems fine actually. You're just yeah. you're protecting from the Aya. And then the golem that comes out is only a two two. Italy has claws and lightning in hand which can make a three three and a four four if they so choose. Is this worth a devolve? Hatchling goes to a four drop. Goal goes to a two. Hmm. It's like, how much do you value this Aya? Pretty good amount, I'd say. It's the last real threat you have. I agree. Mm. Oh, that's not that's not the uh, it's not, uh, one. I guess Jade Claws plus Jade Lightning would deal with the three six. Maybe Aya just goes face. You ignore the the fairy, fairy dragon. dragon. It has to trade, and then a Jade Golem appears as well. But I mean, you, Drake, you could devolve again. Oh. But I think that's pushing your luck a little bit. It was a very well started four mana minion, I guess. Yeah, is that the Hooded Acolyte? Yeah. Very good. You do play a lot of Arena, don't you? I do. Priest 3 6 Cthoon minion. That's actually not in Arena, is it? No, it's not. Because none of the Cthoon minions are. Whirlwind. I have no excuse for knowing what that is. Okay. No. <laughs> Whirlwind, double sleep with the fishes. Oh, it's not relevant. Whirlwind, one sleep with the fishes is fine. Yeah. Drake and sleep with the fishes later will do the rest of it. Is sleep even necessary this turn? It's actually a little bit complicated hmm. because of the way these cards will interact with each other. How does Whirlwind Curator just look? Yeah, I don't hate it. Leaves the well. You, met, you imagine the minion then trades into the primal fin totem. Yeah. Ah, this is better. Oh, this is way better. You can then use well in double three. sleep later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're not in a rush to get the curator out. You can do it next turn comfortably. Things are just looking worse and worse for Turner as this game goes on. <sighs> double maelstrom portal plus jade lightning plus the weapon trading in will actually clear Mexico's board and actually create a board of Italy's own. But we can see Whirlwind Sleep with the Fishes would just deal with that board. I'm, not, I'm think, seeing two more full board clears that Mexico has access to within two turns, an additional brawl in the deck. They haven't even begun to finish their quest yet, which means they have a world of taunt minions. I'm just not seeing an out for this. Italy for having to go for it, going all in, doing what it, he can. It would have to be a draw into Doppelgangster Evolve over the next two turns. Or Manatide Totem that gets them that same result. Right. But this is just one Whirlwind Fishes. You can you can rat before, you can rat after. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, and if you rat, then you're making sure that there are no minions left. Imagine if that devolve was one last doppelgangster. Mm. Rat pulled that out, prevented it from doing its thing. I so if you rat before, you ensure that they have no minions in hand. Yeah, you put four damage on it, but that's fine. It just doesn't matter. 
you're not playing any sort of aggressive game as the warrior. Because you, you, you don't know care. That what, there's nothing in hand. You don't care what you have on the board. You just care that Italy doesn't have anything. Yeah. Because you don't you don't need to kill them to win. You just need to make sure they can't kill you. Yeah. And then you win. Exactly. If, if you have any taunts at all at this point as the warrior, you're feeling. Absolutely fine. Man outside Ted, I'm going to have to come down here. Italy are desperate to pick up Doppelgangster and Evolve. That, that is actually the best totem roll they could get. There's Doppelgangster. Okay. If they pick up Evolve, and Pani's Auto will get Primordial Drake off of the Curator this turn, meaning the that That's a five Drake damage fishes play, yeah. will happen, but there are six drops that have more than five, more than five health. Molder Fisogre, Dread Infernal, Cabal, the Warlock one. Courier. No. No. Oh, no, no, not that one. Trafficker. Uh, Trafficker. I always get those yes. mixed up for Ball some Trafficker. reason. Ball Trafficker. Uh, but it's Patches. Courier obviously has two health and is a three mana minion. <laughs> it's totally a wrong card. Oh, uh, Patches is not what Italy needed. So close. Like when he saw, when Turner saw the Doppelganger, I bet he was mm. so excited. Might actually get there. Okay, Stonehill can net Earth Elemental, White Eyes, Thing from Below. Also, if Evolve is the next draw, then Stonehill, Doppelganger, Evolve is, is a pretty decent turn. Still no second brawl yet for Mexico. Things are not completely. It's not out over of the yet, but it's still heavily Mexico favored. Simply because of primordial Drake sleep with the fishes. Yeah. Let's see, kind of one last chance. I feel like any draw after this one just won't matter for Italy. Is this going to be the evolve? Too much board presence. It's a flame tongue totem. Let's see what we can get from Stonehill Defender then. Okay, there's the Earth Elemental. That overloads you for three, means you can still play Doppelgangster Evolve next turn if yeah. you get the Evolve. The overload's kind of painful, but it's necessary here. The other two just aren't even options. It clears this whole board, too. Everything has to trade into this. If there was nothing in Mexico's hand that could mm -hmm. trade into it anyway. Primordial Drake can actually save the Ali Armor Smith. But I think it's better to just make the trades here. Maybe, maybe at this point Mexico are starting to fear this ball, this hand that Italy are building up. I mean, I would definitely be. There, there's still some things from Italy that can catch you by surprise, for sure. So Direhorn Hatchling is the highest value, but you can Bloodhoof Brave plus a three drop this turn. Just drop Star Creeper as well. Just put all of the taunts down. Very weak to devolve though. Yeah, you get a six drop, a four drop, a three drop, two drop, one drop. Yeah, I guess uh, you're still. It, it would need to be devolve plus something else. Yeah. And Lightning Storm isn't in these decks. And we've seen both Maelstrom portals. They were both used on the same turn earlier. Mm -hmm. So Furious and the and the creator just gonna go ahead and deal with oh. the other night. So time is ticking for Italy. Ah, that's a bloodlust. It's not gonna do anything. No. Do we devolve and try and turn that uh, Stonehill Defender into a Doomsayer? It, that that might that, might actually be our best out this turn. That very well may be it. Um, Patch's bloodlust is not good enough. Can't even play devolve with Patches and bloodlust, unfortunately, because the overload. But yeah. Uh. So Devolve Doomsayer off the stone hill, it's like a one in several hundred chance. It's very low, but it happens. Italy, for the second week in a row, it just looks like they're not able to get past Team Mexico. Time. Goes with the Devolve, gets rid of the Taunts, but it just doesn't matter. I guess Patches plus Flame Tongue Totem is okay, but Turner gonna throw in the tower right there. Team Mexico, Empanizado, able to take the win once again. Thank you, Cora. You're clearly very proud of me for saying that right. Nailed it. And both of our teams have just been eliminated from the Hearthstone Global. They, yes, they have. Oh. That kind of sucks. That sucks. But this is Mexico's moment, and I've got to say, I mentioned it earlier, Mexico 
have been a team I've loved watching grow. I've loved watching them play over the last few weeks. You got to cast them yeah. right back at the beginning for quite a few weeks. They really are a solid team and they deserve everything that they're getting right now. No, I, I, I will admit I was rooting for Mexico on this one. The first couple of games had me worried. Um, but the last three, they they pulled it out. They pulled it off, and they're going through to the top eight. One of the most deserving teams in this tournament come from behind, underdog story, yeah. and they have played their hearts out. As you are about to see, it was a reverse sweep. Our as one well. and only for the day. Yeah. Empazonado coming, taking it back. Was that wrong? That was wrong. Don't worry about it. Uh, Go on. I was doing so well. You're doing good. Coming, taking it back. Irvin G helping out and there you go Mexico taking it unfortunately Italy having to go home as top 16 finishers which you know it's fine Hearthstone Global Games big tournament a lot of teams taking part uh, and unfortunately I've got to admit you you won the day as far as caster picks goes you know what I I, I think we both did great and I think all of these teams that played today absolutely were, were more than worthy of making it through to the top eight of this tournament it is sad that we had to see so many of them go, um, but I, I can't wait to see what next week what next week has to bring and who ultimately will be going through as the top four players to the live finals of this tournament. Yeah, we're, we're getting right to the end now. Very little Hearthstone Global Games left as we just take one last look at the series like we just been witnessed. Forever. Yeah. Yeah. Yunus <laughs> with the uh, with the Zulok not quite able to do anything. Mexico had the Rogue first. Looks like they were. Look, they were messing around a little bit, not taking it too seriously, but then Empanizado came back <laughs> with the J Druid, <laughs> with the regular decks, then evolved Shaman with Urban G. Just a great comeback from them. Great to see such a strong team. Thought when this Dragonfire Potion came down that Italy had a fantastic chance. Yeah. Sunwalker comes down, disrupts the Deathwing, Shedward Pain is drawn for Italy, it's not enough, and then there's Some the blood MVP, right? Just yeah. eating up that Deathwing attack, surviving to tell the tale, and then being part of the final blow of the Bloodlust. What a what a card. What a card indeed. This was also an insane Bloodlust for Italy, but Brawl, Whirlwind Sleep with the Fishes, Primordial Drake, it just wasn't enough for Italy to get past all of these taunts and all of the removal, and Mexico was able to take it three games to two. Right, well, we are going to have a chat with hopefully a very happy Empanizado. He tells us how to pronounce his name correctly. Yeah, I hope so too. Uh, right now. Hey, yeah. Empanizado, congratulations to you and Team Mexico for taking down Team Italy uh, for the second time in a row. How are you, how are you guys feeling at the moment? Uh, we are very happy. Uh, the team just need one victory more for the presence here. So uh, close now, yeah. Top yeah. top eight now, top four, very, very close. Now, I didn't actually ask you about Rogue before. I asked some of the teams like how, how they managed to build their lineup without Quest Rogue. You actually did bring a Rogue, and it was a very interesting Rogue. And you also brought Warlock. Can you uh, explain those decisions to us? Um, we think that this Rogue... Uh, have a lot of chance to win against Agrodex. Then it's a good option going, uh, in our strategy. Okay, and you also <laughs> brought Zoo Warlock, which uh, gotta ask about the Warlock. Yeah, yeah. What was the uh, what was the thinking behind behind the Warlock? What? What? what why? Why did you bring Zoo? Ah, uh, you know, think that, that uh, Zoo is a strong deck. Uh, <laughs> they, he like. You know, it it. I don't think it's the worst deck right now, but it 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 certainly didn't have its its best performance today. Unfortunately, it didn't matter because even though you guys sort of faltered in the first couple of games, you came back and won the final three, meaning that you're going over to the quarterfinals. Did you? ever expect that Team Mexico would make it this far? Yeah, um, we expected uh, on the top 16, but not top 8. Mm -hmm. uh, but now we have the opportunity. Then we work a lot for the final. 
It's good to see you guys taking it seriously. Congratulations one more time on your win. We will see you again next week. So good luck in preparing for that. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Right, well, let's take a look. Now we've had this this long day. Let's take a look at how it's ended. Uh, what the Hustling Global Ooh. Games bracket looks like now. China and Czech Republic getting their wins against Belgium and Greece, respectively. Mexico, South Korea, Ukraine, and Netherlands all pushing forward and making it to the top eight. It's It's been a marathon of a day. I think this is the longest I've ever casted. Um, the first time I've been in Poland, the first time I've casted with you, the first European HGG broadcast I've been able to do, and I... It's it's been absolutely fantastic. Um, we've seen some some of the most incredible matches today that I think I've ever seen. Um, Netherlands versus Brazil, namely, is is one that I, I will remember for a very long time. Um, and it's it's been a fantastic day. I can't wait to see what these teams have to bring in the top eight. Corey, do you know who's going to be filling filling your seat on, on Thursday? I don't, don't know. know. I don't know. Uh, I know Rob Wing's going to be there as usual. I know TJ's come in a little bit. We've seen Kevin Hobb just add. I would imagine it would be one of them, but I guess you guys are just going to have to tune in to find out because we don't actually have a broadcast tomorrow. Well, who knows what to expect then. Thursday, the final four teams that you didn't see play today will be playing to see who else makes top eight. Um, top eight? Yeah, top eight. That's yeah. right. And that's <laughs> going to be Thursday at, I believe it's 2 a.m. It's it's, it's 6 p.m. Pacific, right? Okay. which is, I don't know what time CEST. So if you, Nine hours ahead. If you can work that out, then, then you'll know when to come back yeah. Thursday. And then next week, um, Soto, Lorinda, and I will be bringing you the top the top eight games to, 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 to work out who actually gets through to the finals. So we're at this really exciting final part of the Houston Global Games. It's, it's like the final, final point. We've worked so many weeks, dozen, a dozen weeks to get to this point after the long phase one, phase two, and now phase three is so brief. Um, and these teams have, have worked so hard to get to this point. They're so incredibly deserving. Brief and brutal. Yes. Cora, very brutal. Thank you so much for coming here. From, it was from my pleasure. From Cora, from production, from me. Thank you for watching. Uh, we'll be back soon.